Let's look at some of the, the disadvantages or the cons. Once again, back into weather. Well, what, what may be great for me because I like it cold. You may not like the cold. So it's suddenly now cold or wetter is a disadvantage. Snowier, you may go, hell no. I don't want to start early. I don't like snow. For example, there's a great website out there. Statistically, the guy that put it together is a great researcher, all about planning, PCT, JMT, uh, uh, Post Holder. Now, now Post Holder is the owner is not, he doesn't like snow. And one time I asked him, you know, you're so anti uh, uh, going into the Sierra early. Why is that? He says, I hate snow. I wouldn't encourage anybody to do it. And see, that's his point of view, and he has that right, and that's great. So to one person's joy, I love snow. Maybe to another person, hell no, I'm not doing that. So I'm not going to start early. I'd rather go fast after starting late. Remember, you've got one bookend to this little jaunt you're about to do, and that's powder snow at the end. It can pin you down. It can freeze you to death. It can make you lost in a minute. You do not, you're not able to see the snow, not snow. You're not able to see the trail. You're not able to see trail signs. Everything gets covered. So it's an issue. You've got to get to Canada before first snow. So therefore starting late means fewer days to hike, means you gotta go faster, fewer days off, less fun. You gotta start from before the sun comes up to after the sun goes down. Now. To me, once again, you're getting the drift. That's a bias. I don't like that. I'd rather have breakfast in bed and dinner in bed. I'd I like to camp. So people in my day, you were either a hiker or a camper. I just happen to be a camper. You know, I'm out there for that. If you start early, you'll be out there before the trail crews get out there. So you're going to have to deal with more blowdowns. Blowdowns are when trees blow over the trail. So you're going to have issues of scrambling around obstacles that maybe later in the season uh, wouldn't be there. So that would be a con. There's less trail maintenance at that time of year for hikers on the trail that time of year. In Southern California, you might have an issue with flash, flash flooding. It does happen down here. So pay attention to the weather. You're going to be in arroyos and, and drainages that are completely dry. But if it's raining five miles away, cats and dogs, and you see thunder and lightning, and you hear thunder and see lightning and black clouds way over there, don't think I'm fine over here because you may not be. Know where your creeks start. And if there's a storm up by the start, get out of the creek, go to high ground before it turns into a flash flood. They do happen, especially in the right in the whitewater area. It seems to me around Highway 10, Palm Springs, they had a big uh, flash flood event there a few years back. And obviously, a, a, a disadvantage of starting early is deeper snow. However, See, this is the thing again. I'm just going to keep hitting it and hitting it and hitting it. I don't care how deep the snow is. If it's consolidated, you walk on top of it anyway. So it doesn't matter. Oh, my God, they had this huge winter. 500, 800 inches of snow. I'm never going to be able to hike the trail. Baloney. Once it consolidates, you're perfectly fine. The more snow, the better, because all the creeks are buried. All the obstacles are buried. It's really great. But anyway, I digress. I'm supposed to be on the disadvantage. Okay, so that's the weather disadvantages. Logistically, resupply is probably a problem. It, it depends on how you want to address this. A lot of the resupply locations that you would normally do if you were there after Memorial Day, now I'm talking the Sierra, a lot of the trailheads, the access roads to, this, to those trailheads do not open until the, uh, the fishermen start screaming because on Memorial Day, they want to get out there on the trailheads and start fishing. And so the highway departments get those roads open, like the one to Horseshoe Meadows, which feeds uh, Mulkey Pass, Trail Pass, Cottonwood Pass, Cottonwood Lakes, Army Pass, New Army Pass. Major, you know, uh, major access points for people who want to get into the Sierra, Southern Sierra early in the season. So what you may have to do is what I had to do, what all of us had to do when, before we knew any different. You're going to have to walk out further. Okay, well, where? Well, Horseshoe Meadows is great, but you've got that horrible asphalt descent. Can I make it over Forrester? Uh -huh. Also, don't go over Trail Crest. That is not an option. It is too steep. Too many people die there every year. Don't do that. So it's Horseshoe Meadows, 
Kier, uh, it's it's okay. past the Horseshoe Meadows, Kearsarge Pass, Bishop Pass, Mono Pass, Mammoth Pass, Tioga Pass, and then Sonora. Those are the easy outs. They may be longer. They may only be about 10 days apart. Yeah, you got to carry more food. This is an entirely different experience for you guys. This is not summer backpacking. I got to underscore that and make it, say it with the loud voice. You are a stranger in a strange land. Everything about you is going to be different. It's colder. You're on frozen water. It's slippery. It's tilted in every direction. The trail is not flat side to side. It's going to be inclined because snow fills the trail bed. Unless people are in front of you to pack it down and make a boot track, which is flat side to side, you're going to be walking on slopes that have an angle, which makes it kind of kind of rough, kind of rough until unless you're prepared for it. And I got a little bit off track there. Um, you can resupply out the west side. I did, I uh, went over Forrester and I went west down Bubs Creek to the end of the highway or end of the road at uh, Rhodes End, Cedar Grove, Kings Canyon National Park. It works just fine. Instead of going east, you can go west. There's more uh, stores to the east, but you're gonna also be coming back in that 4,000 foot elevation gain with a full pack. Maybe not so much on the west side. Logistically, yeah, and we touched on it a minute ago, you're gonna to have to carry more food. The, the, local, the distances between resupplies are gonna be further apart. I don't know if you think VVR is open or Mule Trail, Mule Trail Ranch is open when you guys are gonna go through in May. They don't have their high season, it doesn't start uh, that early. So you're gonna carry maybe 10 days of food. You're gonna be going, here's another underlying loud voice thing. Walking on snow is not where you wanna be doing anything fast. It's like driving on snow. You don't want to do anything quickly, no sudden movements, no, no uh, high speeds, anything, because you're on frozen water. It's like walking on an ice arena. It's not ice, but it's slippery as ice. So one mile an hour on snow, get that into your heads. Once you hit dry trail, you've gone over the past, you've gone down the backside, you finally got to dry trail, hallelujah. Yeah, there may be a creek running down the trail and it's, it's, a, it's a splash fest but you can go a little faster. Do your mileage on dry trail and not on the snow. If you push on the snow, you're gonna slip, you know, or at least increase your chances of slipping. I know I got three minutes, Carol, so I'm watching. Um, so anyway, go slow. If you in May have eight hours of sunlight, you're looking at eight miles a day. I would discourage you starting really early because one, your headlamps don't show you, uh, don't beam far enough out for you to be able to navigate to a distance. Remember, you're not following a trail. You're following topography. Matter of fact, the trail is really a bad place to be if it shows on the summer map as having switchbacks, which means it's, you know, well, the worst one is going downhill. It's gonna be steep as hell going downhill. And unless you have the right shoes that edge and have vertically faced heels again, which are suitable for steep descents straight down the fall line, you don't wanna be there. You're not gonna be able to edge in and traverse across anything steep. So you're gonna look at that on the map or you're gonna stand on the rim of this descent into a creek because that's the first thing like going into Rock Creek right after Chicken Spring and Cottonwood, um, a Cottonwood Pass. You're gonna look at that descent and go, holy crap, how am I gonna do this? And you're going to take a first step onto a, a, a traverse on frozen snow and your trail runners simply will not grab. They smear and they turn into skis and you will fall down. First, you're going to feel them slip. You're not going to have any traction. So you're going to back off, hopefully without falling, and you're going to have to rethink. I need to find is what you're going to say. I need to find a route that goes down the same slope, but in, a, in another location where it's not so steep. So therefore, you've got to have a map that shows you those kind of details. The strip map on your phone may not help you navigate by showing you where the safe route. You're looking for ramps. You're not looking for Hail Mary descents. You're looking for safe routes that are gradually sloped up or down. I went a little further on that one than I wanted to, but that should give you an idea um, that you've really got to um, know your route, 
your routing, whether you're going out food or, or you've got to carry more days, you've, you've run into the fact that there's, there's some nasty descents. Maybe you actually fell and you hit a tree and now you're hurt. You know, am I going to be able to walk out? Look at the stuff that, that you just came in on. Are you going to be able to go back out there? Um, gear helps hiking crampons versus micro spikes. I, I can't talk about gear on this venue tonight. Uh, tomorrow we will, because solving these problems is what tomorrow morning is all about. You will probably be in the Sierra before there's a boot track established. Oh, when you go, no, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, I know I've got 10 guys ahead of me. They, they, they'll be fine. Well, between when they went through and when you got there, a snowstorm happened. Now that nice little boot track has once again gone from flat to now sloped. Doesn't work for you. It's not safe for you. So you can't rely upon other people setting a boot track for the month of May. Now later, after the thaw, when everybody's in there, yeah, there's probably going to be a great boot track. And maybe later on in May, there'll be a great boot track. But uh, don't count on it. And also, I know we're going over at 701. Also, guys, if you see footprints in the snow, don't assume they know where they're going because they probably don't. You have to be able to find out where you are by your navigation systems, GPS unit with a screen that shows you where you are relative to the trail because the trail is on the screen and you're on the screen. And it says, oh, the trail is uphill or downhill from me or whatever. It tells you where you are relative to, to you can't get that with a paper map. You may be able to get that on your phone. Oh, but Ned, I can, I can Bluetooth from uh, my inReach to my phone. Great, but where's your phone? Your phone is, is highly susceptible to cold. As a ski patroller, if I put my phone in my outside pocket and went down the hill, it'd be dead in a minute because of the cold rush of air hitting it, even though it's inside a waterproof jacket. Oh, so, okay, I'm going to stick my phone inside all my insulation layers, which is underneath my waterproof shell, right? Okay, great, great. But every time I want to look at my phone to look at my map, I have to unzip, open up. I didn't tell you this. When you go in the year in May, your ambient temperatures will be anywhere from below zero at night uh, to uh, walking temperatures of say during the day of uh, anywhere from 28 maybe to 38 before the thaw. Therefore, you're gonna be fairly covered up. Once you get going, yes, you will generate heat and you can layer off, but fragile electronics need to be behind a, <laughs> behind a firewall kind of insulation. And every time you need to look at it, which I do, I look at it constantly. I've got a paper map in my outside pocket and I got my GPS on my hip. My GPS is designed for cold. It's designed for snow flying. And so I, I, I don't have a problem with it out in the weather, but your phone isn't. Oh God, Ned, I put a, I put a, a case, it's in a case. Well, I mean, is it insulated? You know, I got a case on mine, it still froze. It was dead by the time I got to the bottom of the ski run. But anyway, you don't want to unzip and expose your core to cold. So sticking your phone on the inside isn't a functional, practical solution. We'll get into this junk tomorrow, but um, these are some of the things you've got to really think about. So logistically, going early, it's a bit of a bear because you got to carry more gear, you got to carry more food, getting to resupplies isn't so easy. You've got to have a little more training. Uh, it, it, matter of fact, even for your schedule, it may not have worked with work or school or that kind of thing. So for some people, may, got a family, some people that going early just isn't going to happen. Now for you guys, Going into the Sierra in May, going uh, leaving Campo in March, worked for you? Great. I think all the better for you because I think it's really great. Also, a little bit of public transit you might have a problem with if you're relying on public transit to and from certain trailheads, uh, getting up and down Owens Valley. The schedules might be a little leaner. You may not be able to go as many places uh, when you're there or that early in the season. Strategically and finally, the, the disadvantage Obviously, you've got more snow to walk on. 
Yes, it's consolidated, Easy. but you've got more miles. So what you've got to do is get it in your head. I'm going to do one, two miles an hour, like up in Washington. You can still do your, your 24s or 25s, 30s. I was. You know, I had snow above uh, a certain elevation. So even in August, I was still on snow. In July in Oregon, I was still on snow. It wasn't 100% of the day, like it may be in the Sierra for you guys, but you'll be able to get your traction, therefore more miles whenever you're below snow line. And there will be more of that in July and August in Oregon and Washington, obviously Northern California, because once you go over Donner, and I'm talking kind of planning or uh, solving the problem again, once you go over Donner, the trail is gonna drop in elevation. Once it does, you're gonna have less snow. The problem for you guys is gonna be that you also got more trees. Falling on steep snow in trees means you're gonna hit the tree. The trees usually win, I hate to tell you. So you don't really wanna be horsing around on steep snow with trees nearby or cliffs or boulders or lakes or streams, that kind of stuff. Uh, strategically, yeah, you're gonna have more snow to walk on. You're gonna have some more mud stuff in Oregon. Um, a lot of times the whole thing is too early for a lot of people's personal skills. We talked about it with the logistics. You've got to get a little more training. Strategically, you go, I can't, I can't get touch training on snow. I live in Minnesota and it's all flat around here. I'm from Florida. You know, where am I going to get snow training? It's not going to happen for me. So strategically going early isn't a good thing. And some would argue your risk index is greater. I would probably say, yes, there are greater risks in starting earlier, but they can be mitigated by knowing what you're up against, arming yourself with knowledge and experience, practice, training, some, get some skills under your belt, and you can mitigate your first snow, which is probably going to be uh, from Paradise Valley Cafe on up San Jacinto along um, the Desert Divide going past Apache Creek where a PCT through hiker died last year, I think it was. You can mitigate that with the right gear and, 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 and wisdom and knowing how to identify risk ahead. No hurries. Anyway, so closing principles. I'm just going to blow through these and then we can get into like 20 minutes of, of, of yapping. Um, it can freeze at night in the high desert. So you may have to do really cold, a lot of cold here in the high desert in March. There can be feet of snow in the mountains of Southern California. Obviously, the Sierra. You are ahead of the herd by starting in March. So you're going to have fewer other hikers to rely upon, uh, fewer resupply options available, and maybe even fewer trail angels. So this is starting early is going to try your ability to uh, have your shit together, really. Um, starting early does not automatically mean that you're going to have deep snow. So you do need to pay attention to what the weather is doing. We've had a great start to this winter. Doesn't mean it's going to continue. Um, you've got the advantage of, of consolidated snow. Hey, heads up, you don't need snowshoes if it's consolidated. I've tried several times. I've done the, the entire Sierra on snowshoes, skis, pulled a sled. The number of times I've used snowshoes, I can count on one hand. I've seen snowshoes pitched off the trail by other PCT hikers who brought them and found out they were too heavy to be carrying and never used, so they chucked them. Uh, fresh powder snow, if you get it, you don't wanna be wallowing in it. It's just gonna get your feet wet and cold and then you're gonna be suffering. So wait for it to consolidate before you, you, you leave your nice warm sleeping bag and nice tent. Um, you won't have to deal with post holing, you won't have to deal with sun cups, you won't have to deal with creek crossings. Uh, you won't have to deal with bears. Bears wake up and go down to the garbage cans. You don't have to worry about the bears. Bears are only a problem in the major national parks, Kings Canyon, Sequoia, Yosemite, a little bit around Tahoe because there's way too many people in too small of a space and you're close to town in the garbage cans. So it's really not a problem for you guys. Don't sweat the bears. And the snow bridges will probably be quite intact for you. Uh, if you get more of a normal winter instead of a heavy winter, some of the creeks may have little open holes in them where you can look through the snow and you can see the four inches of water flowing in the creek because it's not, there's not much melt to, to make the water 
the two and three and four feet that it's going to get in a month after you guys are there. If there are these windows of openings in the, in the snow covering over the creeks, assume they're thin and you have to learn how to test your snow bridges before you actually put your weight on them. Okay, so that wraps up the pros and cons.